Greetings. Welcome to a new episode of Art Matters. I'm your host, Wayne Quackenbush. And today we'll be talking with two artists. I'd like to introduce an old friend of mine, Amy Machado. Um, we've known each other for a, more than a decade. Yeah. Uh, we were, welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> We were we were in the the now late lamented and infamous Newport Roundtable Writers Group together. Yes. And so I didn't even have a kid when I first met you. So. You were pregnant when I first met you. Yes. And now your daughter is older. I was with you at Empire Coffee the yep, first time. Yes, that was I the felt first time. Kick. Oh wow. <laughs> so yeah, whenever I see you, I think was of a, that moment. That was a life changing night. Yeah. When we had all those writers together. And yeah. Everybody was reading, and there was all sorts of the usual controversy with that, and um, some really good performances, some really good writing. Yep. Um, and lifelong friendships, I feel oh, like. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. It, uh, lots of characters. It is Newport. Yep. <laughs> yep. So I was involved probably from 2008 to 2016 when it disbanded. Yeah, I think a Google search led me to like a Yahoo meetup group, and that's how I found you guys. I was yeah, looking for writers yeah. in Newport. Melissa was really good at uh, yeah. getting the word out there. And, and we had a lot of fun. Sometimes not a lot of fun, but... Who likes to hear a critique? <laughs> <laughs> Your critiques were fun. Some of the work. Yeah. Maybe. You know what? When you have an open writers group. <laughs> you know. I guess it was worse when it was public and anybody could That's walk true. in. That's true. Oh, the memories. Anyway, yeah. I, I missed all that. <laughs> so today you're here... Um, as an artist, mm -hmm. uh, you, you're you continuing to write. Yes. And um, you're also doing cross-stitch. So yes. we have a, a lot of things to... A lot going on. Yeah. And uh, working and and uh, raising, working with a family, raising a daughter. Yes. Yep. And Ruby, senior, not senior, she's a freshman at Rogers High School. Oh my gosh, I'm already getting her down yep. the door. You got to give a shout out to yeah. Ruby, of course. Yes. Yes. Um, so where would you like to start? Do you want to start um, with uh, showing your work? Yeah. Or? So, I mean, we, we met writing, but like for my job, I write for mm -hmm. work and sometimes for writing for pleasure just feels like a slog. Like I just want to get out of my office. I want to get away from my computer. Sure. Yeah. So I started, um, my mother's a cross-stitcher and a very different type of cross-stitcher. Like I was raised in a home with like cross-stitch Bible verses all over, of course. you know, and all of that stuff. My mom has made a ton of things for my daughter. Like her most prized possession is um, a teddy bear like blanket that my mom cross stitched for her, and it's just such a soothing process cross stitching. But I was like, I need to make things that are me. Yeah, a little bit more uh, sharper edge. Yes. Mm. So my first dipping my toe into that, I'd already had my daughter, and then I found a bunch of pattern books that my mom had, and they were of these um, Boyd bears. And I always oh. thought that was, this one was really funny because it's like a sexy Boyd Bear doing aerobics. And I always <laughs> thought that was weird. And so then I put underneath it, I've been careless with a delicate man, which is a Fiona <laughs> Apple lyric. Yeah, I'm, I'm so I've there. made quite a few of these. Um, and then as I started to build up like different types of inventory, I had this goal. I want to start an Etsy shop. Yep. And so that's how I came up with the name Stab and Stitch, mm -hmm. and it's it's better to stab fabric than it is to stab people. So oh, this is nice. one of yeah. the first ones I put on my Etsy store, and mm -hmm. it, it did quite well. It still does quite well. I kind of make them on demand. Oh, cool. Now, so. Wow, yeah. all right. So no, there's no Bible verses in my no, stuff. This is, this is all new. I mean, it, obviously you have a Southern heritage that you're, yes. that you're, make, you're reckoning with, but you're, in New England now, and um, things, yeah. things can be a little crazier. <laughs> or just, you know, being ADD, I can, mm -hmm. I like the smaller projects because then I can do this one quickly and then kind of move on to the next. I sit in a lot of boring conference calls, and once I discovered that you can make graph paper in Excel and then just start to draw your own things oh, in there, sure. that was like, oh, I can just make my own patterns. Yep. So I do a mix sometimes of like stealing a little bit of things out of my mom's old pattern book, but mostly mm -hmm. they're mine. Or like this one one day was, again, everyone's just so like positive and stuff, and I'm like, let me be mad. Yeah, like, yeah. I just want to be mad. Yeah. I mean, I could see that on somebody's yeah. wall. 
And then this is my top <clears throat> seller of my on my Etsy store, and mm -hmm. it's an ode to the Princess Diana sweater okay. that she wore. So there's not a lot of cross stitch art, or even just art in general, like an, a normal ode to Princess Diana. So this is her famous sheep sweater. Um, you need to explain that because I don't. So there's I, a famous photo of her wearing a sweater, and it's mm -hmm. a red sweater, and it just has sheep all over it, oh, okay. but one of them is black. Oh, okay. And so. One day I was like, oh, I can, I'll can, i just do that. And it was just like, oh, I just made it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I, these, again, you kind of like find a niche where no one else is and then you sell it. Yeah. Not that the goal is really selling things. I mean, I have a full-time job. No, of course. But I but love it, to just. It's, it's also, I mean, when do you usually get a chance to do your cross-stitching? Do you do it, uh, well, we probably can't talk about when you're doing it while you're working. No, so I, I really struggle with allowing myself to just sit and sew. So I have an addiction to the Real Housewives TV okay, shows. Sure. So if I'm watching that, I don't <clears> feel, not that I would ever feel guilty about that anyway, but if I'm also cross-stitching, it's like I'm, I'm doing two things at once. And it yeah, makes me feel and you just have to make sure you don't go outside the line, so to speak. Productive. Yeah. Well, as you can probably notice, a lot of my stuff isn't super intricate, and I do yeah. that for that purpose. So I can, yeah. I'm not ripping out stitches. Stitch no. ripping, as they call it, when you screw up. Yeah. You yeah. probably don't do very much of that. And, and it looks like you have a lot of leeway with the sheep anyway. Of course. On this one. Yeah, but like I just designed these like in an Excel. Yeah. Like just some X's and O's. Sure. Um, and then, you know, I sometimes like to be a bit more subversive. Um, this one's one of my favorites. I had this one up in my house. It's just like, this is actually a DMC. DMC is the company that makes all of the floss that everyone buys. And they will give you like free patterns. So this is one of their borders and I just okay. took it and then within it I wrote um, ask me about my abortion mm. because again people just think cross stitch is like old lady sweet yeah and it's just kind of a new sure way of thinking of it I have a series of these I just sold some that have like live laugh punch Nazis mm -hmm. you know whenever mm -hmm. you can add a little mm -hmm. bit now, of your now I mean cross stitching obviously goes back hundreds if not more years and it would, what were those things called when you had them framed? Was it called a sampler? Like a sampler, yeah. yeah. And that was what kind of what women did <laughs> It would in the be evenings. some kind of a saying on it. Different and types, then yes, embroidery, and, all the different stitches. And then just for more work, let's put the alphabet at the bottom. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so I that. I saw some of the Museum of Fine Art in, in Boston. Yeah, I mean, some of them are intricate. And yeah. the thought of doing them, like, it, with candlelight, you know, and then without like a true pattern and like all muslin typically. Well, you could just imagine the women just like, oh, I, I just, I need to get my mind off of how angry I am. Yes, they're stabbing their fabric <laughs> and not, the subversive stitch, there's a, a, a book about that. Oh, of, sure. of allowing women to kind of express themselves in a way that was considered a woman's yeah, work. completely and, passive aggressive. Yeah. yeah. Very right. cool. Yeah. Now, if you so. really want to read, sure, you have like a minute for that. Sure, you have a sample writing because. So it's funny. The, my favorite type of reading um, is like historical romance, mm -hmm. and a lot of times those women, yes, at night when they're sitting and stewing and mad, they're or they don't want to do it. The woman's like the mom is like go off and sew, and they're like ugh, and they hate it. Yeah. So I've always wanted to have a character who likes to sew. Yeah. And um, I started imagining this historical romance. Of course, you have to have like a good opening, you know, dramatic. So if you want me to read like just the opening few paragraphs. Sure, absolutely. Okay. And I don't have a title for this or anything yet. I just started working on it. Um, Anne Legere, Comtesse du Man, held tight to the upholstered cushion as her carriage took the final sharp turn on the road to Martinham Park. Her arms and legs were exhausted from the strain, from the jostling of the coach and from her nerves that seemed to have been on edge for a year now. The crossing from La Havre to Portsmouth had been uneventful, and as Anne had sat in her stateroom on the ship, she wondered if she should have waited until autumn to leave, when the seas would be churning and rough, the chances for disaster increased. Dying by your own hand was a mortal sin, but going down in a wreck in the English Channel was not. But now, looking across the carriage at her lady's maid, Anne felt guilty for having had such a thought. Lottie was so young and innocent in all this. Why would Lottie suffer just because Anne was crumbling? Anne had not been home to England since she had left for the continent to visit her Aunt Rosamond in Paris over a decade prior. Now, as a team of horses dragged, Anne closer to her father's estate, 
the top of the great house peaking as they rolled up the hills and disappearing again past the dark hedgerow and sagging beech trees that lined the entrance, it all looked exactly the same to her. It was the same as when she had been a young chit, and it was now the same as a 30-year-old widow. She had left Martinham Park in a state of despair and was returning to it in the same way. The wheels crunched on the gravel of the driveway, and the drive driver called out soothingly to the horses as he brought them to a slow stop. Lottie peered out of the window expect expectantly, but without waiting for a footman, and opened the door and emerged, looking up at the three-story portico and silvery gray stone facade of the house. I am home, she thought, and I am cursed. <laughs> That's good. <cool. laughs> I like the drama. <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's uh, almost uh, gothic there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I bet Ruby likes it. Oh, gosh. <laughs> if you could get a, a freshman in high school to read anything that you do as an adult, no, God bless I'm, you. <laughs> yeah, sure, absolutely. <laughs> and so we can switch gears and you can continue to show off uh, some of your stuff. Oh, sure. Talk about your subversive nature. Yeah. So this summer, you know, Barbie was in the zeitgeist. Yes, yes. So I just decided one day to do like this one. I made this for a friend. I'm about to send it to her. Nice. And it's Really, sometimes it just is like, I just like the way this font looks, or I just like these colors, and then I put it all together. Yeah, hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Yeah, yeah, it had to have a lot of pink in it. That's yes, sure. and then this past um, winter, I was, Jamestown Art Center does a holiday fair, mm -hmm. and I participated in these, and I sold a ton <coughs> of these. Mm -hmm. So I made a lot of, like, little hi, Barbies. Oh, I like cute. different types of Barbies. Oh, yeah, White sure. Barbies, black Barbies. Brown is, Barbies. Is that uh, black Barbie with the pink afro? Yes, that is. <laughs> so you know what? Everybody's I a Barbie. remember pink afros. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so those, and then sometimes if I do get bored with doing um, on the Ida fabric, that's what cross-stitch fabric is typically called. It's called Ida fabric? It's called Ida, A-I-D-A. -A. Um, and then I will sometimes, if I find a postcard or something that I like that's stiff that I can stitch into. Oh, wow. Like I'll just stitch into that. This is a postcard that came from the Jamestown Art Center. It was all in black and white. Yep. And then I just kind of added, these are French knots on that one. And then just yesterday, oh, I might not have pulled it out, but I was working on another thing um, yesterday of like a, a oh, French yeah. pharmacy thing. But this is like my Ruth Bader Ginsburg. When she died, I was like really sad. So I, sure, of course. this was her image that appears in the Wall Street Journal. So I just downloaded it and printed it on cardstock nice. and just started and to stitch around it. What did you do? Is it. that uh, cutouts around it or the... Yeah, this is a different type of stitch. Um, and I actually think I'm using... Oh, I see what Yeah, it's okay. kind of like a silvery type of... Um, I think this is called a... That's the thing about embroidery. There are so many different types of stitches. Cross stitch is just one. Yeah. Like this is a French knot. Yep. Um, and this one might be a border stitch. I believe that's what that one's called. So, Very yeah. Cool. You know, oh, here's the one that I was working on yesterday. I'm, a, I'm obsessed with the French pharmacies. When, my partner's French, so whenever we go to France, I'm always like, let's go into the pharmacy because they have great skincare and drugs that we don't have. Okay, and sure. So I just love the the cross and so yesterday i was just kind of bored is it green yeah it's green oh wow yeah okay so and just kind of like adding a little texture to like a postcard yeah yeah it's kind of you know i recognize that so it's a thank you bag yes. yeah so i was like oh i get all these thank you bags i'm gonna do a no thank you bag oh, okay oh to that yep. all right so, so it looks like we're run out of time already oh, surprisingly that flew by and uh <laughs> Thanks for coming by. Thank it's you for having great me, to Wayne. See you. I'm it's glad so good we to ran see into you each too. other a couple weeks ago. I know. I need yeah. to pop into your store more. Yeah, yeah, we'll keep in touch. Your next door neighbor is my M&M dealer, so. Oh, yeah. M&M's. Okay. Candy, yeah. not. Yep. Oh, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Awesome. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you. We're here with our second artist, Sarah Breslin. Great to see you. Um, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. Now, we've known each other for a number of years, and I've always uh, respected and enjoyed your work. Um, you you want to tell us a little bit about your history and how you got into being an artist? Yeah, uh, so I'm sure like every other artist, uh, I grew up doing artwork. It was a great form of escapism for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and as I got older, I started taking it a bit more seriously. Um, 
and funny enough, I've been uh, discussing this a lot on my social media pages. I actually quit doing art for a number of years because I didn't feel like it was a good thing for me to be doing. A lot of the adults in my life were very um, discouraging about it. Wow. Uh, so I took a, a huge step back from it. And it wasn't until I started uh, URI in 2014 that I realized that it was my passion and my calling and a huge missing part of my life. Mm -hmm. So I have been pretty much pursuing art professionally since then. Mm -hmm. um, and now I am a full-time artist. I also do some marketing and social media uh, consulting as well as working part-time at an art gallery in Very Wakefield. Nice. Very nice. So, and um, <clears throat> so your subject matter comes from all different places. You want to talk a little bit about your inspiration? Yeah, absolutely. So um, as you can see from most of my work, I specifically focus on the female figure. Mm -hmm. um, I find that the human body and specifically the female body is a perfect uh, like tr transportation, a perfect mode for me to discuss what is happening to me in my life personally. Mm -hmm. um, I discuss mental health, grief, um, female empowerment, um, all of those things through my work. I'm deeply inspired by mythology, history, um, like I said, mental health. Mm -hmm. That's a huge thing. Um, and just the human experience. Weren't you involved a few years ago in a, in a show that was about mental health? And uh, did you do something for that? Uh, quite possibly. Okay. I've been um, very you're, busy you're so the past busy. couple of years. Well, no, that's great. Uh, so most likely, yeah. I'm just thinking frame of reference. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you want to start uh, sharing some of your stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll start with my newest painting. This is the first painting that I made this year. Uh, it's called Starborn, and it's a mixed media piece. So it has acrylic, colored pencil, and I also have some silver leaf around the edges. Oh, nice. And, yeah. And uh, is there a story behind uh, this, uh, I'll have to just say, goddess? <laughs> I was just really inspired by a fantasy book I was reading, uh -huh. and I just really wanted to make something pretty. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just like, you, it looks like you had to design all the jewelry, and and uh, um, were, you, were you laying down color and using the color pencil for texture? Is that how that works? A little bit, yeah. So I started the piece in uh, acrylic, and I just, I hated it. And I didn't know how to save it, and so I just followed my gut, picked up some colored pencils, and went for it. And now I'm now you're very happy pleased. With it. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, because uh, you know, obviously, acrylic is hard to get the gradation sometimes that you're looking for. And I know you're, you're yeah. looking for subtlety in this piece. Yeah, I am. It is a challenge to blend. Mm -hmm. It is. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Okay. see this is another uh one of my favorites so this is from my zodiac series make it vertical so that uh, you can get it it's uh the the zodiac capricorn so i have all 12 of the zodiac signs illustrated mm -hmm. and this is a special piece because it's one of my resin prints so i use uh, an archival print and I do multiple layers of resin and collaging on top of that to create this really neat three-dimensional piece of artwork. Um, and it's a really fun excuse to play with sparkles. Yep. <laughs> oh, so or, it's a sparkle. Um, do you apply that uh, while the resin is curing? Um, no, so I apply it before I do a, la a layer of resin. I learned the hard way. If you don't do that, the glitter moves. Oh, it, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm fascinated by the glazing process. How do you, how do you get the depth that um, the pieces are on uh, different levels? So I use um, sheets of thin acrylic 
on the sides and I have them taped so uh -huh. that it creates a rigid edge. Mm -hmm. And then I pour the resin in and I do it in very small increments. So the resin goes in first? Yeah, so I do a layer of resin and then I adhere some of the collage pieces, another layer of resin, more of the collage, another layer of resin. So are I you paint. allowing the resin to cure in mm -hmm. between? So yep, 24 hours in between. This takes days then. Yes. And you said that this is an easy process. Yeah, well, it only takes me about 20 minutes to pour the resin, pour the resin yep. do the collage pieces, things like that. Um, it's a lot of hurry up and wait. Yeah. So. Yeah. Like, uh, almost literally waiting for a paint to dry. Yes, literally. <laughs> <laughs> but if you hold up, well, just show the, the depth, the side that's amazing there. Yeah, but, this one has about seven layers. Yeah. It's very cool. And it's got heft to it. Mm -hmm. And the resin goes on the outside as well? Yeah, I just put a thin coat on the outside so it just looks um, a bit more complete. Now, do you paint that on at the end? Yep. And, and it just kind of ties everything together. Yep, I do one last layer where I do a very thin coat on the top and then a thin coat on the sides. And when you say archival prints, um, you, you, do you make those yourselves or you get them made? So I do get them made. I work with a printer out in Aux Austin, Texas that makes them and oh, wow. he prints them on watercolor paper, which okay. I love because yeah. it makes them look um, as close to the original as possible, which is very important to me. Now the original was uh, watercolor? It was, yeah. And uh, uh, just watercolor? Yeah, these were just watercolor. Um, and I don't believe I used anything else in my Zodiac series. It was just a strictly watercolor illustrative series. Watercolor and glitter. Well, for this, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got you. All right. And I'm assuming that one's from another of so, your... So this is also from the Zodiac series. This is Virgo. Uh-huh. And it's the same deal. She just has a few less layers. Right. And the tattoo... That's part of her uh, her sign. It is, yeah. So a lot of people confuse this uh, illustration for Gemini. Okay. Because it has the twins on it. Right. Um, but the way that I depicted Virgo was specifically the planet Mercury, which is the planet that rules over Virgo. Mm -hmm. uh, and Mercury is fascinating to me because it's heavy in both the feminine and the masculine, there's always two sides to it. Mm -hmm. And I think specifically with Virgos, uh, there's two sides to them. Okay, so you have the... the yeah, so I have the duality. Mm -hmm. yep. And it also helps that one of my favorite Virgos also has the same tattoo. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes <laughs> sense. And you have uh, your... You can show maybe this one? Yeah. So this is one of my archival prints that <clears throat> is framed. And this is uh, my illustration of the Bride of Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. um, this is not an original. Like I said, it's one of the prints. Uh, but in the original, her green eye and the green background glowed in the dark. Oh. Yeah, I like to add funky elements. Um, Golden has a... Uh, glow-in-the-dark medium that you can use. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's super neat. Wow. All right. See, I'm learning all sorts of stuff from you yeah. today. That's amazing. I like experimenting. Now, would, would this originally have been a watercolor? Yep. So originally, this was in a, a watercolor. I believe it was... Oh, I don't even remember the size that it was. It was much larger than this. Yeah. It was actually watercolor paper stretched over... A frame? Uh, yeah, a frame. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, did you drop out the web or was that uh, painted on? Uh, no, that was paint. That was painted around. So oh, okay. oh, I use like lots of tiny brushes. Yourself. Yes, I oh, do. My goodness. <laughs> All right. That's not easy to do. And uh, this wonderful skull. So this is another one of my resin pieces. And is that that's a print as well? Yep. So that's a print. And like I said, I collage, so I cut the print into pieces so that it has that uh, three-dimensional mm -hmm. element to it. And this one is called Femme Fairy Tale. Um, I designed it after I read a book that discussed the use of the female bodies in film mm. and how a lot of times women die or are abused to help the male character have a uh, better arc. Yeah. It was a really fascinating book. 
Sure. Yeah. And you have uh, another set, a diptych there. Yeah, so I have this. This was one of the last pieces I made in 2023, so last year. Uh, it's called Resurrection and Revival. Uh, and I did it for Motif Magazine's uh, Picks and Poets show, where I was paired up with a poet and I got her poem. She got one of my pieces of artwork. She wrote about my artwork and then I painted one of her poems. Oh, cool. That's a whole uh, subgenre of poetry. Um, yeah. Poetry about um, uh, evoking artwork. Or... It was such a fun show. Yeah, no doubt. It's always yeah. fun to collaborate. And, it it and really artists is. Artists don't really. You know, being an artist is a solo occupation for for it is. Um, a lot of people. So it's always good to gets a little lonely. You, you learn, you learn, <laughs> you learn though when you you're bouncing off ideas from some with another person. Yeah, it was it was really fun. Now, was there a show that? Yeah, there was. It was at the Waterfire Art Center. Oh, cool. Um, we won uh, best artwork. I won, both of my pieces won best artwork, and she won best poet. Beautiful, so, wonderful. Yeah. Now, this is the original then? Yep, this okay, is the original. Cool. So you are able to work small when you need to. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got a couple more big big guys back there. Yeah, so, let's see. This is my original painting of Aphrodite. Mm -hmm. I painted this last year. It was a really fun illustration to come up with. Um, I really like incorporating pearls in my artwork. Mm -hmm. I feel like they are a representation of femininity, um, purity, and uh, elegance, grace. Also dealing with irritation. Yep. <laughs> so. And again, you dropped out the hair. Mm -hmm. Did you ever think about using a mask and then taking the mask off? I've used masks in the past. Yeah, I'm um, sure you I just have. find that it's. Uh, at this point, it's a waste of my time to put it down. I'd rather just spend the time Getting working around, around it. it. Sure. Um, and well, I have I mean, tiny enough paint brushes for it, so. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a real meditative process, too. It is, yeah. It is. I lose myself when I'm painting, and I sure. very much appreciate sure. that. Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you get to the point where you're completely nonverbal. Yep. Everything's just space. Yeah. Space and color. I like that. It's a Isn't nice it? brain break. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> yeah. Very cool. And um, you have, I don't know, can we get the skateboard bed up? <clears throat> no, I know there's a story behind this. So this was done for a show in Minneapolis last year. It was a skateboard deck called, uh, or a skateboard deck show called Drop In. Mm -hmm. um, and I decided I wanted to go with the word Phoenix. Okay, I see it. Yeah, and yeah. so this is called Song of Fire. Uh huh. And it's mixed media, acrylic paint, ink, and uh, 21 karat gold leaf. Wow. Now, have you sealed it? No, it doesn't appear you have. So that's the actual surface there. Okay. Yeah, so it is sealed with um, like just a matte uh, spray, mm -hmm. um, archival spray, but. Yep. Okay, we gotta we gotta wrap it up. I'm getting signals from the, from beyond. <laughs> but thank you, Sarah, for coming yeah, in. Of and uh, it's really enjoyable. Great to see you again. Yeah, you too. All right. And that brings us to an end of another episode of Art Matters. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time. <laughs>